So hello, my name is Paul Hudson, and this talk is called Mastering iOS Animation. Uh, if I've learned one thing in these last two days, it's don't use the headset mics. I'll be, use, I'll be using this thing the entire time. And this might fail, of course, any minutes, as we'll shortly see. Uh, as Stuff said, uh, I'm back in Cologne. I was supposed to be here last year. It's a real privilege to finally be here. I had a rather hideous biking accident. Won't be pictures, don't worry. So I couldn't come last year. I sort of pulled out. But now I'm finally here, I can give to you the only joke I know in German. Uh, so brace yourselves for this one. Uh, according to Sigmund Freud, what lies between fear and sex? Funf. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> Woo, it's bad. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> uh, and also, as you know, there's a legal requirement. I've got to say, this is the last talk before lunch. I'm keeping you all from lunch. Uh, we're also, what? 24 minutes over, so I'm going to go as fast as I possibly can through this to get through it. You've got to have lunch. I should say, spoiler, that's not lunch. Don't get your hopes up. <laughs> it's something else. Uh, so just briefly, who am I and what do I do? I run a site called Hacking with Swift at currently hackingwithswift.com. There are something like 1,200 articles there now, all about Swift, all online, all free of charge. Uh, early this year, I launched a new video course called Swift in 60 Seconds, teaching Swift in videos that are one minute or less. It's lightning fast and includes, yes, things like closures and optionals and more. Every year, I run the Swift Community Awards, where you can vote for the people and projects that have helped you most over the year. Just last month, I released a new open source app on GitHub to help people learn Swift interactively on their phones on GitHub. Go and check it out, see how great my code is or not. And I, two weeks ago, I launched a podcast, like everyone else in the world, with my friend Sean Allen. It's called Swift Over Coffee. And of course, it's excellent. Go and subscribe. But my main job is writing books about Swift, iOS, macOS, TOS, watchOS, Vapor, design patterns, you name it. If I can break it and fix it and break it again and fix it again, then write about it. I love it. That's why it's called Hacking with Swift. I enjoy having fun with Swift. And, and everyone here, including folks on the live stream, go to this URL and you can get yourselves a free book. Uh, all my books come with a free lifetime Swift updates, which means in about two or three weeks, you will get a uh, update for Swift 4.2. That's going away in five seconds. Four, three, two, too late. Next. <laughs> if you want to get in touch, please do. I am two straws on Twitter. On GitHub, I'm two straws. On Reddit, I'm two straws. But on Stack Overflow, I am two straws. Uh, alternatively, email me. I'm paul at hackingwithswift.com. OK, today's plan. Animations uh, are complex things. I've tried to break it down into small, understandable chunks, looking at things like, what are the basic rules of animation? How should they work and why? We'll look at a recap of the basics, things all being well you all already know, or at least knew at one point before you've forgotten. We'll look at more modern, interruptible, scrollable animations using your iOS 10 APIs. We'll do a bit of core animation stuff, I'd go a bit deeper than UI kit. Talk about blending views, things that are definitely not animations. Don't try and use animations for these things. And finally, some last tips. Now, if you watch any of my talks, normally I present using Keynote. I present usually two to 300 slides in a 30-minute slot. Um, this time, I thought it'd be a terrible idea, and uh, I was wrong. I thought I'd do the whole thing as an iOS app. Um, this is literally the iOS simulator running on my Mac, which is why I got the gray bars around it. Um, now, the reason for that will become increasingly clear. It allows me to do some text and then have UI kit code literally running inside the slide. Um, so everything you see is done as part of live UI kit code. Uh, <coughs> this does mean <laughs> Xcode might get in the way sometimes. You know, Xcode's like a bit of a laugh. And of course, if you do see any comedy crashes, it's my fault, not UI kit animation's fault. The basics. The rules of animation, what are we trying to achieve? Now, you may have heard the idea that our apps should surprise and delight users. Now, delight, got that. That makes sense. Everyone wants to be delighted. I hope you all have delightful apps. Surprise, not so much. Surprise isn't a very pleasant thing. There are lots of nasty surprises out there, things we don't like. I didn't behave what I thought. That was not predictable. And you've got to think about it. You know, Users trust our apps with a lot of data. It might be like high scores. It might be their banking information. They expect our apps to behave in a really predictable way. Because, to be honest, we haven't got a great reputation for this. Our apps sometimes do very surprising things, like Samsung sending random pics to other people. Don't do that. Instead, 
Animations should be functional. They've got a job to do, and that's it. Get out of the way and continue on. You know, probably the most famous iOS animation, the most common you'll see, is right there. If you can see it on the screen, it's this flashing blue insertion carrot. It's telling me the app is live, the app's responding, it's waiting for me to type something in there. I'm going to try and type one-handed one of the very few German words I know. So, it's responding, it's alive. But apps, animations also guide our eyes. When we delete something, we can see it moves from A to B. We know if we want to undelete it, we look in B, yoink it out, it's back to being in A again. So it tells us where things have gone and why. There's also a performance aspect. If you're doing a long background task, having a quick distracting animation actually makes your app feel more responsive versus showing like a progress bar or something. And animation should be simple. Compare this kind of Microsoft presentation with Apple's equivalent, and you realize getting things out of the way, focusing on what matters, delivers a much more dramatic presentation. So simplify your animations. And when you've done that, fine. Be as delightful as you like. I don't care what you do, make it with fireworks for all I care. If it's functional and fast and simple and clear, fill your boots. And polish and polish and polish. Now, my number one favorite animation of all time will only be appealed to sort of older folks who've been using this, was this animation from iOS 6, the wallet app. When you shredded a pass in the pass app, it, it got a shredder out and literally shredded your pass up into little bits. It was fantastic. I would actually add passes again just to shred them again. It was that nice. <laughs> That's a delightful animation. And sadly, it's replaced with this really quite boring sort of TV screen effect. It's a bit dull now, but oh well, skeuomorphism. Now, if you're thinking through this talk, come on, where's the magic? Where's the surprise? Show us some cool tricks. No, that's what I'm trying to say here. Your thing should be functional. Your animation should be kind of boring in some respects, right? I don't want to see any magic. I don't want to see any fancy tricks going on. If you're doing that, you've probably lost point slightly. So let's look at the basics, things I believe you all should know at this point. Make sure we're all on the same song sheet. And there's going to be a lot of code. So if you want to read the code, come forward. I don't smell that badly. First up, our old friend, UI view animate with duration, right? I can say, take this picture of monkeys, move it across so its center position is 870, end my little closure, and it'll move across the screen at very, very slowly. But it'll work. I haven't got to worry about it. iOS takes care of all the hassle for me, which is really, really nice. That's its job. We haven't got to make all the interstitial frames by hand. We just say, move to there, you figure it out. And in fact, Daniel Steinberg gave me a lovely example of how this is very similar to a map function. We don't say how to do every step of the way. We just say, here's my transformation, you figure it out. If you want user interaction, you should know you've got to add this allow user interaction uh, enum here. So if I click on the monkeys now, you'll see it changed the background picture of my thing. Like I said, it's all UI kit really running. Um, but if I press next to make this thing animate, and now click on the monkeys, you'll see it doesn't work anymore, despite me saying allow user interaction, which is very, very frustrating. And what's happening here is that UIKit's being a bit clever. When you say animate with duration, something happens immediately under the hood, your model, the actual underlying data, updates straight away to say, okay, that picture is now in the top right corner, instantly. Not in 10 seconds, now. It's there now. And core animation, handles the animation in the meantime. What it means is, when this thing's animating, I can't click here to change stuff, but I can click here to change stuff. <laughs> Thanks for that UI kit. You should know that this kind of code doesn't do what you think. I'm trying to rotate this thing by pi times six. Pi is 180 degrees. Six times that is 360 times three. Um, so when I animate that, nothing will happen. Thanks for that UI kit. That's basically never what I want. Uh, so. If you see by times five, now you'll see what really happens. It will do a 180 degrees turn. Rather than doing five times that, it'll do a single 180 degrees. Again, never what you want. <coughs> if you really want to do that, stack it up. Call out the duration, loop over six times, make individual pi transforms, apply them all the concatenation, and now it will spin around beautifully. Again, hopefully you're all doing this already. You can do additive animations. These are new in iOS 8 or so. And it means when you add animations that uh, work on the same object, they blend together beautifully. So here I can say, initially move to 870x, 
and then after that, go back to 100. And what you'll see is it'll slide to the right, pick up some speed, and then when I press next again, change its mind, slow down slowly, and reverse and go the other direction. It doesn't snap back and forwards. It looks much, much nicer thanks to the additive animations. And you can do more advanced things. You can say, you know, firstly, go to 100, then go down to 600, and then scale up and so forth. And it'll, it'll just blend them all together absolutely perfectly over time. Really, really nice. Super simple. Hopefully you know about the animate keyframes method. The code for this is a, a bit grungy, but I, there's no simpler way of writing it. You can say, I want to run a five second keyframe animation. And then say, here's my first keyframe. This thing is saying, uh, start at zero, last for a third of my time, become bigger. Second keyframe, start a third of the way through, last a third of the time, move to a position. And the last one will be, uh, last, start a sixth of the way through, last a fourth, one fourth tenth of the way through, and move again. And it will just blend it beautifully as it goes, like this. It gives a nice bounce effect as it winds through. That's called a cubic animation. Um, there is a paste animation, which looks slightly differently. It kind of scales it the entire time. You can choose how you want it to work, basically. Very nice, fairly simple API. Plus, you can animate more interesting things. So here we're doing a center X and a transform. We could also say to this, change the whole corner radius of my view to be rounded, to make a, a, a lozenge shape, and make the whole thing red. And again, UI Kit just figures it out for us. It'll do the whole thing. It's just gorgeous. UI key animations are really, really nice. Plus, you can uh, animate thoroughly advanced stuff. So here I'm saying I've got a UI visual effect view. I'll make the whole thing using a dark, prominent style. And it'll just blend it out gently on the screen like that. Gorgeous. Totally free of charge. Just put it inside animation blocks. It all works. Great. Hopefully, you all knew that stuff. That's the basics of animation. It kind of works well right now. But there's so much more, and that's where the superior interruptible animations framework comes in, which is all powered by UI View Property Animator. I hope you are all using this. So nice. Add that property to your class right now, that you can go ahead and do things with it. So I'll say animate over five seconds with Kirby easy and out. Add as many animations as I want as independent blocks. And when I'm ready, call start animation. I get the same effect. It'll just slide across the screen. It looks the same but it's more flexible because we're using closures now, so we can call them in different ways. Plus, user interaction works correctly. Hurrah! So when this thing's animating, I can click on the monkeys <laughs> to change the background color, as you'd expect. It behaves sensibly. Even better, you can add completion blocks whenever you want to, as often as you want to. So I can say, add a completion block. When this thing gets to the end, I want to make the whole thing red. Boom, it'll fly across. Ping, red. Does it all for us. Add as many as you like. Even better, and more important, this is where it gets interruptible, you can scrub these things. You'll see if I add a segmented control to the top. When I tap on these things, it will just literally scrub through the animation. I can say, give me 30%, give me 60%, 80%, and so forth. And UI Kit will intelligently interpolate the remainder of the animation based on where it started. So I can say, start from 70%, and then press play from there, and I'll get the last sort of 0.6 animation, whatever it is. Not a lot. And of course, you can do it with a slider as well. And it will Perfectly interpolate between the positions. It's very, very nice. There we go. Now, one of the neat things is you can add animations as often as you need to, whenever you need to. So here, I'm going to animate this thing across the, the screen like this. But partway through, I'm going to add this second animation, make this thing scale up. And UIKit will automatically figure out how far you are through the animation and use the remainder to apply the next animation. So they'll both synchronize exactly to finish at the same time. So the first one kicks off. I go partway through, and then the second one kicks off. They both finish exactly right, and boom, turn red. Does all that for you? You haven't got to worry about it. It's super nice. You can reverse animations. So here, I've got the monkeys flying around and so forth, and I can say, right, go to the right. Actually, wrong direction. Go to the left again. No, back to the right again. And again, UI Kit just figures it out. It's super nice. You haven't got to worry about every step along the way. What you've seen is that when we hit the end, it turns red. But when I have this pause on completion equals true, we get some interesting different functionality. Because when it gets to the end now, it will not turn red. It never actually finishes anymore. It's just going to pause at the end. What this means is, and it's important for any UI work using animations, the UI animation has not been destroyed. It's still active, which means I can grab the slider even when the animation's finished and drag it around again and again and again. So it lets your animations remain interactive even when they're officially finished. If you want to do springs, brilliant. API for that. Looks gorgeous, use your damping ratio. Plus, you can add your own control points. So here, I've got one that does a sort of a slow, fast start, then it slows down, then speeds up again. That works great. You may notice, by the way, that if I scrub this thing, 
it scrubs linearly, which uh, may be what you want, may be not what you want. There is a separate API for that called scrubs linearly, helpfully. Set to false, and now it will scrub with the animation timeline. It's set to true by default because this is a bit of a weird animation. Like, I wouldn't, wouldn't, that wouldn't make sense to my finger on the screen. But yeah, if you want it, you want it. There we go. There's some CA stuff, and you should know, of course, UIKit goes down to core animation under the scenes, but there are many things you cannot animate in UIKit. You're kind of stuck with doing core animation, uh, and it's a bit grungier. Um, the main thing you want to look at here is, of course, CA shape layer, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. You want to use this for all your shape drawing. This here is a single uh, a shape being drawn, like a, a, a rectangle, with some rounded corners. And with CA basic animation, I can say, I want to go ahead and add up all the dots and dashes in my screen. This will find the dot, dash, dot, dash, and add them up to a total. Make an animation based on the line dash phase where the dots and dashes start. Say I want to start from zero, the default, up to however many dots and dashes I have over 0.5 seconds, forever, and begin. And you get this instant, immediate sort of marching ants effect. It's ridiculously simple to do. And it, again, it's doing nearly all the work for you. Similarly, you can do things like stroke end, make the line draw itself or undraw itself. So here I'll say animate the how much of this thing's being drawn from nothing being drawn to fully being drawn over two seconds. Make it go back at the end, so it'll draw, undraw, draw, undraw. And then repeat forever again. You get this lovely effect. Super nice. Plus, any Bezier path you want, you can draw. I mentioned unwrap at the beginning. This is the unwrap logo as a UI Bezier path being drawn, just saying draw stroke zero to draw stroke one. And again, it's doing all the work for me. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. I can just sit back and relax. If you use paint code, this is how I did it. I went to paint code, drew my shape as I wanted it. It generates a Bezier path, paste that into my Xcode project for this uh, dem demonstration here. Boom, it works out of the box. It's absolutely fantastic. Then there's blending views. This was introduced in iOS 11, of course. We had this thing where uh, nav bars would go from that size to that size really smoothly, really nicely. This is actually a little magic trick. It's quite simple to do. Um, you have two labels. One is small. On the right, you'll see it goes from a small thing and scales upwards and fades out very gently. And at the same time, you've got a larger label which starts small, invisible, and scales up and fades in. So all you're doing is combining those two animations at the same time, synchronizing them to make it look good bit of mathematics, you know, you've got to calculate the difference between the large one and the small one. This will say, well, you're twice as big or three times as big, whatever it is. Make that a transform and apply it, and it'll do the rest for you. And it's the inverse of that for the larger one. Figure out how much smaller I need to be and apply it. And you get this lovely, smooth animation out of the box. It's really nice. There are some things that are not animations. Please don't use animations for these things. It's a bad idea to use animations here. For example, uh, if you've got a score label and you want to count upwards, to show how many points someone's earned. Great, this is a bad use for animations. You want to use a thing called CA Display Link. Give it a method to update, give it your display link, attach it to a run loop, and it will just fly up automatically like that. Do not use animations for this. Um, display Link, if you haven't used it before, synchronizes itself to the screen refresh rate, so you're guaranteed to have maximum time to do your work, as opposed to using a timer. Uh, more advanced effects, for example, applying static to images, or warp effects, or, you know, uh, glowing lights, or even, let's have a look, uh, bendy water effects. Again, animations are a terrible idea for that. Don't do that. You want to use uh, shaders. I've got a whole library for you. I wrote it. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's on GitHub. <laughs> it's got like 30 of these things. You can just drop into your, uh, your sprite kit scenes. Boom, you get you know water and so forth out of the box. It works great. Do not use animations for that. Uh, if you want to use particles, like this kind of thing, having confetti to fall down, do not use animations for that. We've got a whole thing called CA emitter layer for that. It's brilliant, out of the box, super fast, goes down to metal. Animations are a terrible choice for that. And finally, if you want to do UI view controller animation transitions, um, just don't. That's like the worst API ever made. <laughs> finally, <laughs> some last tips. Things people forget. This is one of the most important things you can do if you do animations. Please check this property, UI accessibility dot is reduce motion enabled. People with accessibility problems will turn this on saying, please don't show me big animations. And almost no one reads this property. They completely ignore that. It's really annoying. They'll see things flying around the screen when they've asked this not to happen. You should instead say, I'll just fade it out gently and fade it in gently. Rem reduce the motion, because they've asked for it explicitly. Or to go hardcore mode, just do that. Just turn off all your animations. And you can still call UI view, animated duration, and so forth, and it'll be totally ignored. It'll just snap across where it needs to be straight away. So with one small change, you can help people with uh, vision problems much, much more easily. And finally, 
Uh, if you have this as your MVC code, where C is the big red blob on the right ball of mud architecture, please remember your animations are view code, which means any analytics duration, any UI view property animator code comes out of your view controllers into your UI view subclasses. That's where they're supposed to live. That's why it's called a view layer. <laughs> Wrap up. So we looked at the rules of animation. You know, be functional first. That's the most important thing you can do. Make it actually have a reason for it. We have talked about the basics. You know, you can do cool blur effects by asking iOS to do it all for you. Plus, you can be scrubbable, interruptible, reversible, and more using property animators. Coronation lets you do the handful of things you can animate in UI kit, like stroke end, line, line dash phase, and so forth. You can blend views, get the nice iOS navigation bar effect trivially. There are four things you should not use animations for. Please do not, unless you really hate yourself. And these last tips. Thank you very much. Well, that was fast. Actually, you could have pissed it down. The, the food would have waited for us. So now we have a little bit of time for questions. Of course, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was going to say, like you now, because we have a little bit of time, you can ask him any question about this talk or any of his books or any of his life. Oh, great. Uh, <laughs> um, question anyone? Or is everybody hungry? Okay. Hey, Paul, the thing that you use for the counter, can you say uh, just a quick thing about that API? What does that use for in general? Take this, take this. Ooh. Whoa, we have two mics. Wow, two working mics, essentially. Yeah, really quiet one. OK. Uh, so CA Display Link um, is, so who has an iPad Pro here? Anyone an iPad Pro? How fast is the iPad Pro in hertz? 120 hertz, right? It's extraordinarily fast. That means you've got eight milliseconds to do all your work in between screen redraws in order to animate smoothly and keep your UI responsive, right? So it's extraordinarily hard to do lots of complex work in eight milliseconds. If you use like a timer to say, you know, a bit of label, a bit of label, whatever it is, your timer might fire just after the screen's redrawn. But it might fire halfway through screen redraws or towards the end of a screen redraw. If you start doing six milliseconds of work towards the end of a screen redraw, you will not get 120 hertz. You'll get four hertz, something like that, right? CA Display Link allows you to synchronize work to screen redraws, so you can say, as soon as the screen redraw, ha redraw happens, call this method immediately. Give me the maximum 8.3 milliseconds to do my work in. So you can do all the transformations you want, all the UI label updates you want to do, safe that you're maximizing your CPU time. Is there any other question? Because I do have one. But yeah, you're first. If you'd like to rebuild the uh, shredder, the shredder animation, um, how would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, first, so they were they were doing it using older APIs that we wouldn't use anymore. Um, nowadays, you'd use a new UI screen capturing API to do a UI view render. You'd render the pass to a, a single image, and then I would off-screen split that into, what, 12, however many slices it was. So I'd make 12 individual images that were stitched together to look like they were attached, and then make it move up the way. Now, the magic is, the, bit, the best bit is, that as it shreds it, it, it curves up slightly. Um, so they probably use, I'm guessing, I don't know, I'm part of the UI kit team, they probably made separate segments of the images being sliced and curve the last one. Now, I'm not sure you realize this, but uh, all your CA layers, every one of them, can have 3D transforms applied to them to apply perspective. So in fact, you're kind of saying, apply a little bit of perspective to the next one and a lot to the last one, make a curve effect. That's how I would do it. How they did it, <laughs> no idea. Enough, enough. <laughs> Thanks. I stopped discussing about the pro or, or against skoomorphism in the panels a couple of years ago. I gave up. I, I ended up being the only one pro. Um, I do have a question, the last question, and then I, 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 I would agree that you are the first in line. Um, <laughs> so you know, you guys all you give, you give him priority. Um, I know magicians don't always show their tricks, but I'm really in keen on um, getting a little bit of background about how this whole yeah. thing worked. Uh, presentation from an app because uh, you don't know this probably but like three years ago I think we had uh, a talk 
uh, from Nils van Horn, uh, which was about coordinators, by, by, the, by the way, you would have loved the, the talk, and it did everything on the iPad. That was really interesting. Um, so, like in two words, how, how did you do this, um, um, this app? Sounds like interesting. Like I said, I normally do keynote. I prefer entertaining over education, personally. That's my preferred style. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it was like endless slides of like code. I thought this isn't going to work. I want to show how it actually looks on screen. So three and a half days ago, I thought I'm going to toss my keynote away, uh, which I slightly regret. <laughs> um, and coded the entire thing. And uh, Because so you spent three and a half days? It's, it's, it's only three and a half days old, so the code is pretty nasty. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not, okay if it's nasty, but I, out there. I was just wondering if there are so a bunch of images or... Yes, no, 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 God damn, it's, it's way oh, more... Come on, if you nasty. just said it's nasty. Uh, so you'll see uh, my deck is here, and uh, there we go. So it is still a deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it literally, it loads like it's saying, it's image type slide with that flag thing, use that button color. Then there'll be like, um, oh, what top one is AR? So title, title, the image me. It just whizzes through, it parses that into um, uh, structures and then recreates that on the screen. Um, and there's stacks of these overlays. These are the all the, everything I had to do in code. And then I wanted to show in code, basically I loaded these overlay things here. So every individual thing with like segmented control or sliders was a different view to overlay behind the slide. Uh, yeah, it, it felt a bit like procrastination. <laughs> I, should, I should be working my slides, really, but I know I'll code a slide engine instead. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was basically procrastination, but you know, hey, it's pretty fun, why not? Thanks for showing the magic tricks. All right, give him, oh, yeah, last question. No question, just uh, just a comment. Do you know the um, adapter presentation from, I don't know, three, four years ago on SceneKit? Because the session was completely written in SceneKit also, and um, your presentation reminded me massively on it. So. I'm flattered. Super good job. Was it this year's dub dub? Well, last, year, last year's dub dub was the intro video was done in Sprite Kit. The people walking around the screen, that was done in Sprite Kit. Avoid each other with collisions and stuff, that was Sprite Kit. So they do do it. Cool. All right, we will uh, please give him a round of applause and then. Um, <laughs>